Hey everyone, today we are going to learn about solubility and precipitates. So, we'll start off with a demonstration here. So, aqueous potassium iodide reacts with lead nitrate to produce... Uh, let's see what happens in this reaction. Um, so, before we do, AQ means aqueous. Um, and that just means that it dissolves in water. So we're going to see these two chemicals react, and we'll see what two products are formed. All right, let's take a look. All right, so here I have my aqueous potassium iodide, and to that I'm going to add some lead nitrate, which you, you see here. Uh, let's see what happens when these two chemicals react. See this really cool Simpson yellow product forming. Um, this is actually a precipitate. So we're gonna learn more about what a precipitate is. Uh, as you can see, little solid bits are falling down there. Uh, but there you have it. That's our demonstration for today. Okay, so now we want to predict the products here, and so this is what we call a double displacement reaction. So here these two metals are going to switch places. I'm going to get lead iodide, and I'm also going to get potassium nitrate. So I wrote an S next to the lead iodide, um, and so S stands for solid okay and so this is that yellow stuff that you saw uh, in the test tube and so we also got potassium nitrate in our solution so then you might be wondering how do we figure that out how did mr. Hua know that before I tell you let's talk a little more about precipitation reactions what is a precipitate well that's a solid formed from uh, a liquid solution so Whenever you see this S, that's pretty much your precipitate. In a precipitation reaction, um, we form a precipitate, okay? And these are pretty much always going to be double displacement reactions. So the easiest way to solve these or look at them is to switch the metals around, okay? Basically, the two metals will switch places, as you can see in these two reactions. Okay, so next, now that we can predict the products by switching the metals around, now we want to figure out how can we figure out if it's a precipitate, a solid, or if it's aqueous. Okay, how can we predict those? Well, we're going to need a certain set of rules, the solubility rules, to help us out. Again, this pink worksheet you'll always have access to. It's on Google Classroom, and you should use this when you do the homework. So let's go through all of these rules really quickly. Uh, first, all nitrate salts are soluble. So if you see NO3, it's going to be aqueous or soluble. Anything with sodium, lithium, potassium, all the alkali metals, and ammonium are soluble. So again, AQ. Chloride, bromide, and iodide salts are soluble unless they're bonded to silver, lead, or mercury. So when it says exceptions, Something like silver chloride would be insoluble or a solid, okay? So that's what it means by exceptions. If these things are bonded to chlorine, bromine, or iodine, then they are not soluble. Most sulfates are soluble. Calcium, barium, lead, mercury, silver, strontium are exceptions. So again, uh, an example of that would be PbSO4. That would not be soluble because lead is not soluble when bonded with sulfate. Now we have these other rules. Most hydroxide salts are insoluble. So 
So uh, AgOH, for example, would be insoluble. All sulfides, carbonates, chromates, phosphates are insoluble. So these rules down here are telling us what does not dissolve. And this one's really important. First four rules override five and six. So that means all the rules that says something is soluble uh, overrides any other rule. So that means anything bonded with sodium is soluble. Uh, any nitrate will always be soluble. Um, here, NaOH, for example. So rule two overrides rule five here. Rule two says that anything with sodium is soluble, although rule five says this has hydroxide, it's insoluble. So here, rule two overrides rule five. I know it's a little confusing, so just try practicing yourself with those three problems. And then we'll practice these problems. So exercise your solubility. Um, first column says, are both reactants soluble? So you're going to use your solubility rules. And you'll see that LIBR, lithium bromide, most bromides are soluble. So this is AQ. Silver nitrate. I know that from rule one, uh, all nitrates are soluble. So again, review your rules. Anything bonded with nitrate is soluble. So are both reactants soluble? Yes, we got two AQs. If that is true, then now we want to predict the products. So here we're just going to switch the metals around. I get silver bromide plus lithium nitrate. So now you want to look at these two products and determine are they soluble or not. Silver bromide. So let's look at my solubility rules. Bromides are usually soluble, but because this is silver, it's not going to be soluble. So it'll be insoluble, a precipitate. And so my precipitate here is silver bromide. In the second example, let's take a look. Are both reactants soluble? So let's take a look. Calcium carbonate, CO3. Carbonates are insoluble, and so this isn't bonded to sodium or anything like that. So this is insoluble. Nitrates are soluble. That's rule one. So are both reactants soluble? No. If you put no, you don't have to fill out the rest of that table for that row. Okay, so that's how you go about this. Make sure both reactants are soluble. Uh, if they are, then you have to figure out the products. And then once you figure out the products, figure out the precipitate. All right, practice, practice, practice. We're going to do this for a couple of days.